Happy holidays. I'm Megan. And thanks for being here. Perhaps again, this is part two of happy hips and hamstrings for your holidays. And so if you didn't find the first one, you could do that. This does roll into it, the first into the second, but not necessarily that you did the first one. So maybe you're just here for hamstrings. And that's what we're focusing on today. A little bit behind how I work with hamstrings is that oftentimes, if the hamstrings are tight, everybody says they have tight hamstrings, it's because the other muscles that are the, we have the agonist antagonist. So if the hamstrings are tight all the time, it's because the other muscles might not be firing. So we're going to work with some of those, but we'll also do some myofascial release. So you will need some uh, lab approved balls and a block. And if you have an extra yoga mat, grab that too. So let's start out by exploring uh, some of these relationships between hamstrings and we'll go into quadriceps. So take that rolled mat, or if you don't have a mat, rolled mat, something similar, and we're going to put it underneath the left leg. Take your hands behind you and you can keep a right leg bent. It might feel better or extend it. But the, the uh, mat is going to go underneath the meaty part of your hamstrings of your left thigh. And begin to just gently press the back of the thigh into the, into the mat and then release it. And what you want to start to sense is the engagement through the quadriceps. So we can sit up tall. If for any reason sitting is not comfortable for you, you can sit against a wall or you can do this lying down. It's sometimes a little bit harder to see and feel, but you can press from here. So you choose your position. What we're trying to do is get the hamstrings to release by engaging their partner, which is the quadriceps. It also helps to push through the heel a little bit. Now, more than anything else, we're finding ourselves in this area of the leg, right? Feel your femur bone and sense the front and the back. It's really helpful when working with the hamstrings to also be aware of the front of the thigh. So next time you take it down, push into it and continually press into the back of the thigh, into the rolled mat or whatever you're using. Even take your hand to your left thigh and see, can you feel those muscles engaging? You should feel a really strong one. Vastus medialis coming into the knee. It goes through your hip and your knee. And we want to keep that engaged for a few breaths just to feel that hamstring release. Give it a chance to stretch. And then release it. Shake it out. Before we go into the other side, just take both legs out in front of you. If you're lying down, you can do the same thing. Take your legs long. And just feel. Feel the backs of the legs and the hamstring area. Pause for a moment. And then we'll do the other side. So again, this can be done lying down or seated against a wall, but you're gonna put the, the um, rolled mat right underneath the wide part of the thigh. The left leg this time can stay bent with, with foot on the floor or you can extend it out, see what feels better. And just begin to press, just a little bit of pressure into the mat and then releasing. So what we're looking for too is to make sure it's not the hamstrings that are clenching. We should feel the front of the thigh fire. Those muscles engage and then release. You can close your eyes. It may help to press your heel. Imagine pushing on a pedal with your foot to engage those quadriceps, but try to smush the mat with the back of the thigh. Lengthen the back of the thigh and engage the front of the thigh. And you're bending in and out of your knee, just familiarizing yourself with the left hamstrings and quadricep. And take that next one into a position of hold. So push. You might even take your hand, use your hand for your feeler. See, can you feel some action in the front of the thigh? Is it engaged? Lengthening the back of the thigh. So this is a what we'd say is an active stretch. We're, we're activating the muscles in the front of the thigh to stretch the hamstrings and just an easy start to the stretch. One more time and then release that. You can remove it. So this next part, if you are lying down, come back and sit with me. We're going to take, we'll work with the left hamstrings first. So that was an introduction to, to a stretch for it, but we'll take the left leg out long and we're gonna bend the right leg and take it out of the way. So out of the way could mean foot to the floor. If you like to drop it open to the side, you can do that. If you're doing that, use the block, support your right leg so we can really focus on the left leg. If you find that sitting like this is not comfortable for you, 
What might help is to put that rolled mat or something underneath your knee. So you keep a little bend. You're still stretching, but giving yourself a little bend in the left leg. So that's an option for you. But now from this position, stack your ears over your shoulders and your shoulders over your hips and just begin to start making some circles with your torso. So we're not even thinking about the hamstrings. I find that with hamstrings, it's like we have to sneak up on them. But what you might sense is as you're coming forward, there's a little bit of stretch in that back line of the left leg. And we can change where we feel it in the hamstrings by taking the leg wider. As we go wider, we're actually gonna feel more in the inner line of the hamstrings or even into your inner groin. If you take the leg more towards the center line of the body, you'll feel it right in the center in the meaty part of the hamstrings, but you might be doing it here, right? That, that don't be ashamed if you like having the, something underneath your knee with a bend in the knee. And you'll know because we're not, we're not gripping our upper body or our jaw. The other thing is it's not a dump of the shoulders forward. You can take your hands to your waist. Move from your waist so your spine is staying long. What I sometimes see when somebody's got tight hamstrings is this rounding of the spine. So you're going to stay up tall, even if your movement is just here. I'm making those circles. And you can come forward a little further each time. Switch the direction of the circles. Other ways to play with finding different lines in the stretch of the hamstrings is to turn your toes outward or inward. And outward, you'll feel again more the, the inner line stretching versus toes turned inward. And see if there's a place where you just want to stop and be still. And I'm still going to stay active, so active stretch. And the way we can do that is press the heel forward and the ball of the foot. And think of when that mat was behind your thigh. If it still is, that's great. Then push the back of the thigh into the mat or push the back of the thigh into the ground. So you're feeling stabilization from the quadriceps as you come into the hamstrings. And just be still. Visualize that space. So it's, a, it's an active stretch. You might feel it all the way up through the back of the hip. So hopefully you did the hip video first. You know how to stretch the glutes out. And then coming back up slowly, we're gonna change our position out slightly. I'm gonna turn towards you. So you're gonna bend your right knee and bring the pinky toe side of the foot down and bring the heel of the right foot to the knee of the left foot. So we sometimes call this Z sit. From this position again, first just make the circles. It's like knocking on the door, waking yourself up. Check to see you're comfortable in this position. If you want any supports underneath the knees or the hips, you can do that. So again, there might be a use for a block underneath the right knee. And so this one, we want to, you can stabilize yourself with your hands behind you if you'd like. We want to feel the big toe side of the left foot. Just sense where it is first. And when you're ready, as you breathe in, lift that foot off the ground. You're going to feel the outer hip and more of that outer line of the hamstring. So you're going to lift it up and take it down. So again, we're, we're working into some of the muscles around the hamstrings, engaging those. Just lifting it and dropping it down. And seeing how that feels, that outer hip engages and releases. And you might even take it up and hold it. Notice I'm using my hands to support my spine so we're not falling down, spine is long. Because it's true, if you have tight hamstrings, they can pull on your lumbar spine, they can pull on your buttocks and cause back pain. But what I often find too is that it's not a case of the hamstrings just being tight. It's usually that they're weak, so they can be long and locked versus short and locked. So you can hold that up there, breathe into it, and let it come down, let it relax. Take that left leg out, take your right leg out, just take them out for a moment and be still and feel. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the right leg. So depending on what's comfortable for you, left foot can just come to the ground and we'll explore 
making the circles, or you can drop onto the pinky toe side, maybe support your left knee. If we keep the heel straight off the hip, you're gonna feel it right in the center line of the hamstrings. You might start with the leg out to the side, for, feel it more to the inner thigh, see what suits you. Lift up tall through the crown of the head. Option to put that rolled mat underneath you, and especially at least start there. See if you can stay more upright and just making some nice circles. You can remove that at any time. Play with where your leg is in line with your hip. Just start to notice as you come forward, a little more support under my left leg. As you come forward, do you, are you feeling a little bit of stretch through the back line? And you can keep it more active just by pointing your toes up, pressing through your heel. Maybe turning the toes slightly inward. Notice more of the stretch in the inner line of the leg or, or outer, see where you feel it. And then you can also turn the toes outward. You take the leg out. And we're moving, think of moving from the top of your pelvis. We're rolling in circles on the sit bones from one side to the other. So it's not the head and the shoulders moving, or the spine is not rounding, the spine staying long. Let the weight of your upper body fall into your sit bones, and then roll around on those sit bones. And that's important to recognize because a lot of the attachment points for the hamstrings are right around your sit bones there. That's where they're all attaching. And see if there's a space where you just want to be still. You might be using the mat underneath your knee to keep a soft bend in your knee. It's, it's your, you're creating the juju that's just right for you. Just a, a little bit of stretch and then make it more active by either pushing the back of the thigh into the mat or the back of the thigh into the ground, pushing through the heel. So feel that same engagement through the quadriceps that we felt when we were putting the, the mat underneath before. Imagine you can breathe into the back of your right thigh. Say hello to it. One more round of breath. And then breathe in, come up. We'll do that second position. So now the, the left leg may already be where you need it, letting the left knee fall out to the side. You're gonna take your right leg Bend the knee, take the right foot to the outside of the right hip, place the left knee somewhere by the, or left heel by the right knee. So this is that Z sit position. Find it first, be still in it. And if you can't be still, make any adjustments. So I'm, I'm a lot more limited in my internal rotation here and I, you'll feel that, you'll feel that in your hip. So you wanna make it sure that you can get that big toe side of the foot down. And then once you're there, support yourself with your hands. Feel the big toe side of your right foot. And then when you're ready, see if you can lift it. So it takes a moment to think about what muscles, they may not turn on right away, right? My left side turned on right away, my right side's fighting it. And it might barely lift, but you'll feel that activation in the outer hip and sort of the outer hamstring line and taking it down, just lifting the big toe side off the ground. The other thing is to go slow back down. So gravity's gonna help you with the down, but fight it just a little bit on the way down. Inhale up, exhale slow down. See what you're feeling there. You might wanna hold it for a few breaths. Up in the air, keep breathing. It's just a tiny movement, but it creates perhaps a lot of sensation in the outer hip and right in the outer line of the hamstrings. And we'll take that one down. Take the legs out long for a moment. Shake them out. We're gonna do one more seated position. So this one you do wanna stay up and you wanna have something uh, slippery in front of you. So I've got the floor here. 
So legs, both legs out long. You can support your spine with your hands or be on a wall. You can lean up against a wall. We'll do the left leg again first. So feel your left leg and then sense your pinky toe side of your left foot and tilt it out. So without bending the knee, rotate the leg out and then bring it back and then rotate the leg in. So big toe side. So just do that a few times. You're going to feel it all the way up through your hip. So now we're going into, again, some of those muscles around the hamstrings. We'll add on to that. Go to the pinky toe side and then slide the left leg away from the center line of the body. Go to the big toe side and slide the leg to the center line of the body. Without bending the knee, go in and out. So think of activating all these muscles around your thigh. You'll get an inner groin stretch as you go out to the side. Outer hip stretch as you come back to the midline. And the hamstrings are just going along for the ride. In and out, letting the legs swim. If you're not feeling the muscles engage, then do that little bit of push through the heel or think of taking the back of the thigh into the ground a bit more. Spine long, arms are supporting you. Just a few more swimming strokes with that left leg in and out. And let it relax, shake it out. And we'll do the, the right leg. So check to see you're still on your sits bones. Feel the pinky toe side of the right foot and first just rotate it out towards the pinky toe like you're trying to touch the pinky toe to the ground. Come back up, release that. And then big toe side and just release. And notice that the effort is on bringing the pinky toe side down. The release is just that. You just let it flop back to whatever its center is and then big toe side and back to center. Watch you're not bending the knee. Try to keep the leg as straight as you can. And then once you find that internal and external rotation, externally rotate, slide the leg away. Internally rotate, slide it towards the center of the body. Just going back and forth. And you may feel that <clears throat> one leg has less mobility than the other. That's okay. But feel all the muscles in and around your big, strong femur bones. Sliding that leg, you'll feel it into your hip as well. So this really does carry right over from the hip practice because we're connecting. We're now connecting the thigh, the hamstrings to your pelvis. And going in and out. Nice and slow. And you might push through the heel a little bit or work the back of the thigh towards the ground to keep the front of the thigh a little bit more engaged to help use those quadricep muscles as mobilizers so the hamstrings can stretch a little bit more. Last one, in and out. And then relax it, shake out the legs. So we're gonna come down onto our front side next. And I'm gonna get comfortable there, onto your belly. Wherever that is for you, once you get there, shift your hips side to side and you can jelly roll the tops of the thighs into the ground. You may rest on your chin or your forehead wherever your arms want to be so that your front body can release into the ground. Now we'll work more specifically with creating contraction or shortening of the hamstrings and then releasing. And what you may find is that, as I mentioned, is if you've got tight hamstrings, they may not actually be tight. It might be that they're, they're not engaging. They're long and weak. So this is, this is a good one to show that sort of issue. So what we'll start by doing is just press the front of the thigh and the kneecap into the ground and then release. You can do this if you're doing it to your breath, press down on the inhale and release on the exhale. And you might even take your hand to the back of the hamstrings or even the buttocks, because usually hamstrings and glutes will, they're kind of a little bit of a team there. See if they're engaging when you press the thigh down and then releasing. So this is our wake up call to shorten and engage the hamstrings. And then we release. 
Are they turning on for you? And I'm sorry, we're starting with the left leg. So start with just that. And then we'll add on to that. So now you're gonna bend your knee. So your heel is right above the back of the knee. So we're at 90 degrees. Find about that spot. Then again, push the thigh into the ground to start the activation, the, the contraction. So we're recruiting the hamstring muscles and the glutes. Activate them and then lift the leg up off the ground. And then let it come down and all the way down, shake it out. So again, this is a towel all. If you find that when you go to lift it, you like if you feel tightening in your low back muscles or um, any place really other than your glutes and your hamstrings, it means they're not engaging for you. So it's not a case of, of short, tight hamstrings. It's weak, maybe weak and long, but either way, waking them up. So push the thigh into the ground, lift it up. Might even hold it there for a few breaths and let it come down and check to see too that the right side staying quiet. We're working with just the left side. So a few things to play with with this movement that can be really helpful is we were doing that internal and external spiraling of the leg. So if right now you take your left foot and you drop it out to the left side, so pinky toe side down towards the floor, what that is is that's internally rotating the hip. So if you do that and then try to lift, it's a whole different section of the back of your hamstrings lifting you up. And then coming down and releasing. So you might feel that as more tension or more, more compression, more engagement. And the outer left hamstrings. And then releasing that down. You can also explore the other way. So think of the big toe side of the foot. Drop the big toe side of the foot towards the center line of the body. So just a little bit towards the right leg and then lift up. And for most people, this one will actually be more natural. We're externally rotating the hip just slightly and lifting up and you'll find a tendency to want to lift the hip off the ground. Keep the hip off the, keep the hip on the ground. Think of lifting from your inner thigh and you can go back and forth. Drop the foot out to the edge. Can you lift up from there? And then drop the foot inward, lifting up from there. Do a few, engage, push through the heel to lift up. So you wanna feel those muscles firing and then let it come completely down, shake it out. I'll let you play with one more round with that left leg and ch also checking to see that you're not tightening muscles in your shoulders or like I said, your right hamstrings or glutes, just that left leg. It's, it's all on its own. Press the thigh down to start the engagement, push through the heel, lift up. And sometimes you can even keep it lifted and drop the heel to one side and the other. And just feel how strong the contraction is in the back of the left thigh and the buttocks. Or make sure it's not just in the buttocks too, that you can feel it in your thigh. Hold it there for a few breaths, but don't hold your breath, keep breathing. And then take it down, shake it out, let it relax. See if that left side, the butt cheek and the hamstrings feels a little more alive than the right side. Shift your hips side to side, let it all go. And then we'll do the same thing with the right leg. So it starts by just pressing the front of the right thigh and maybe in the kneecap, the upper kneecap into the ground and releasing. You can do that on the inhale, push down on the inhale, release on the exhale. I'm gonna turn towards you. So pushing the right thigh into the ground. When you do that, when you, so think when we were, we were sitting up and pushing into the ground. This way we felt the quadriceps engage and that's what we wanted to happen. So now that we're front side down, we're pushing the thigh into the ground and we're feeling the hamstrings engage, the back of the thigh, targeting that area. And then once you can sense that they're turning on and more importantly, turning off just that right side, then we go ahead and bend the knee, place the heel, just above the back of the knee. So find that L shape for your leg. 
Think of lifting the leg, push it down first to engage it, and then pushing the heel up towards the sky or lifting, lifting the thigh. And if you tend to be a person that uh, the foot is wanting to drop in and you're lifting your outer hip more, what I suggest is think of lifting from your inner thigh. That'll help to engage more hamstrings. Inner thigh lifts. Do it a couple times. Let it come down. Check to see that your muscles, and so what we'll often feel if the hamstrings are weak is this tightening across the low back. If that's happening, shift your hips, release. And then my suggestion is to just work on pushing the thigh into the ground because generally that what is less has less tendency of tightening the back muscles because we're keeping that back longer. Or just a tiny little lift. doesn't have to be very far. I mean, you can reach back there. Can you feel your hamstrings light up, shorten? Think of shortening the space from the bottom of the buttocks to the back of your knee and then releasing it. You may find that one side is <laughs> responding much more pleasantly than the other. And then the idea of dropping the foot out, so we're creating that internal rotation of the hip and lifting up so you get more in the outer hip and, and hamstrings and glutes and taking it down, releasing it versus letting the right foot fall to the center of the body and lifting up from there. Again, for most of you, that will be easier. It's easier to find that line. So my usual rule is whatever's easiest, do the opposite. <laughs> Strengthen dropping the foot out to the side. And we purposely woke these muscles up in that movement, that swimming movement of the legs. Check to see your left leg, buttocks and low back is staying relaxed. I can feel my left side trying to grip and, and, and help out. So I'm saying, no, 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 relax, just the right side. And the left side happens to be my side where I get pack pain. So it's used to gripping. Again, some tricks are if you think of lifting from the inner thigh or gently hugging your right inner thigh towards the center line of the body, that can help to wake up the hamstring line. Pushing through the heel a little bit. And making sure we're taking it down and completely releasing. So this isn't a strengthening pr program, it's, it's waking up. Wake them up. Once you know they're awake and everything else is relaxed around the right leg, then take the right leg down and let that relax too. And play with those different positions. Foot dropped out to the right side, foot dropped into the left side. Take your last one. And let it come down. Release, relax. Shake it out however you need to. And take your time. I'm going to show this next part um, seated, but again, it can be done lying down. We're going to go into our myofascial release. So this is the, the fun part. And so we've just, we've really worked more with mobility first then a little bit of stability for the hamstrings. We felt them fire. And now we're going to go into really more of a, like a juicy release, a hydration of the connective tissues. So even though we're working with hamstrings, I like to address the calf because really it's when we're working with, um, with connective tissue, it's, you have to think of all one line. There's not this, this beginning and end like there is to muscles. So we'll start with the left leg and take your selection of lab approved balls. And what we can start with is with the left leg, you might keep your right knee bent, foot on the floor again, coming up against a wall is fine, but you can do this lying down. I'm just gonna show it to you seated. And put that ball right underneath whatever part of your hamstrings you wanna start with. And you can start by just letting the weight of the leg fall into the ball. Just let it fall. So if you feel like you're not getting enough, what you can do is put the ball on a block Sometimes that gives a little bit more pressure. Otherwise, finding the right size ball is part of it too. So the, 
the smaller the ball, it's going to get right into those little areas. Obviously, the, the, the harder the ball, too, it'll get more into those little areas. This is just a drier ball here. I've got a snoring lab next to me, but nonetheless, I'm going to do it on the ground. So you can see, if you don't feel like sitting up, explore it down here. <laughs> and then just a gentle side-to-side -side motion. So what we're looking for is that all of the muscles in the whole left leg line are completely relaxed. If we feel the muscles tensing, whether we're doing this seated or lying down, we know that our nervous system is, is sending the signals for protection. It's trying to protect the joints by engaging the muscles. And in order to really get into the connective tissue, which includes the tissues that connect your muscles to the joints, to the bones and muscles to muscles, right? Tendons, ligaments. And you just want to let the muscles relax. So we're feeling it more in there and the fascial chain through the back of the left leg. And just letting that go back and forth, the weight of the leg releasing into the ground. To take a few more in that left calf area. So starting down there and working our way up. Because typically if we have tightness in hamstrings, it, it's gonna travel downward. And if you only have it on one side, Check to see, is it, is it the whole side or is it just in the hamstrings? So next one we do, I really enjoy because we get a little bit deeper into the back of the calf, but also the cap, back of the hamstrings. And you may want to use a little bit smaller. This one's tennis ball is generally appropriate. Smaller ball and something a bit um, more solid. And we're going to go right in the back of the knee. So you can actually feel right where there's space to put the ball in there. And you're gonna put the ball in there and then squeeze it in. So you you're, you can do this lying down again, but I like to do it seated because then what you have the ability to do is grab a hold of your shin and walk your heel in towards your body, sit up tall and just gently squeeze. So we're also decompressing the front of the kneecap, which is lovely, but feel that in the back of the hamstrings and right where the hamstrings come into the back of the knee, as well as your calf. And you'll see, I just do a nice little rocking motion. So if the seated positions doesn't work for you because you have any sort of discomfort in your back and spine, take it down to the floor. And the truth is down on the floor here, you've got gravity helping your leg, the, the lower leg to fall into the upper leg. So it's actually creating compression by letting go, by not doing, but just releasing the weight of the leg. So either space here, and you might want to play with where in the back of the knee that is. See if you can find a line. Are you feeling a line in the back of the thigh when you're doing this one? I just had one pop out and make its presence known. And you can adjust the ball to more towards the inner back of the knee or the outer knee. And just small, tiny little motions. Take a few more breaths, appreciating the front of the knee opening up, decompressing. I'm feeling that connection point where the hamstrings come into the knee, support your knee joint. And we'll take the ball out. I always think that's sort of a magic moment. Take the ball out, let your knee extend, and just feel, does it feel spacious back there now, in the front of the knee? We'll move into the hamstrings themselves in the left leg. So once again, you can keep your block handy. I'll show it seated and lying down. So if you're down on the ground, you can stay there. The typical way to go is just the ball, and that's a great way to start. And if you can't just let your leg hang on the ball, you're not going any further, you're not moving, you're not putting more onto it. But sometimes it feels good to get a little bit firmer ball in there. The other thing is to use the block. So if I wanna go a little bit deeper, what I do as I come into the hamstrings is put the ball on the block and then let the weight of my leg hang. So this can be done in a seated position. If you can sit upright without straining your back or your shoulders or your neck. Otherwise use that block and you can do it down here, whoops. 
Move that one out of the way, my dryer ball. I gotta go do some laundry when I'm done with this. So put that to the side and just roll. Let it roll. And it's nice, the combination, particularly if you're doing it on the ground, because you can keep that soft knee bend in the left leg so you can explore the hamstrings without feeling like you're pulling on your low back. Just a nice side to side. If you find any really sensitive areas, be still. Think of the weight of the femur bone just falling into the ball. You can let toes fall out to the left or the right. And then just slightly changing that line of where that ball is. You can start from down by the knee and work your way up slowly. And the key is to make sure the leg feels heavy. So I said in the last one, your, your connective tissue, specifically your fascial tissue, is, is the, it's the skin of your nervous system or of your brain. And it, it doesn't want to be poked and prodded. It, it wants love, love and release and juiciness. So just a nice, easy, slow movement. You can almost feel the space in between the different muscles in the back of the thigh and you can get the ball right in there. Or just letting the thigh be heavy. You can move from the leg, but we'll reverse it from the uh, hip video. So in the hip video, what I had you do is move from the leg to feel it in the hips. Now what you can do is let the leg stay completely relaxed and move from your hips. So shift your hips side to side. See how that works for you. So you're really not recruiting the leg muscles to move. There should be a softness, a sensitivity. And sometimes right now, and oh my goodness, what did I find? And when you find those points, those trigger points as we kindly call them, just be still. Let the weight of the thigh fall into them or back out a little bit. Don't be right on it. It's like you can knock on the door without going in. Just say hello. Checking in with your breathing. No restriction in the breath. If there is restriction in the breath, then we're doing, we're overdoing. Always good to underdo. And take your last few moments in your left leg. And if you've been doing all of this seated, that's, that's grand, but go ahead and take out whatever you have underneath your leg and come down to a reclining position, at least for a moment, and take both legs out. And feel yourself from the heels to the hips, particularly the back of the left leg versus the right that posterior chain in the leg. Can you sense any difference? And what is that? Name it for yourself. Warmth, coolness, difference in the length. How are your hips or the back of the pelvis resting on the ground differently or the back of the calf or the thigh? Knee joint. So the knee joint is one end of the hamstrings, the hip being the other. And joints are just that. They're parts of your body that, that join things together. So your hamstrings join your hip to your knee, the torso to your lower leg. Very important muscles of propulsion. So let's do the other side. If you're doing it lying down, stay there. I'm going to come up to show it first. Coming back to that seated position, we started with the calf. And you can choose your tool widely. It is wisely. It is not a weapon, right? It's a it's a tool of of loving kindness. And just take it right to the back there, and see if you can let the weight of your calf just fall in. So one of the ways you'll know if you're not is your foot will tighten. You'll feel yourself lift your toes up. Just letting it roll around. Option to put the ball on a block if you'd like, or to do the sliding down. And there's lots of space here to explore too. You can come more to the inner calf, 
right? And that big, juicy, meaty part of the calf across the back. And just being still. Think of the weight of your leg bones falling into the ground. Foot and ankle relaxed, knee relaxed. Just an introduction into the back of the right leg line now. And I think when we go off camera, I'm going to redo this calf. (laughs) It's asking for more. Be still, do some small playful movements, just rolling your leg. It's a little holiday New Year's gift for yourself. And notice how lovely your left leg feels. And give that same gift to your right leg. And we'll move on. You can always return back. We're going to move on to the knee. As I say that, I just found a spot. Oh, my goodness. So coming into the knee, generally a smaller ball so it can fit right between the tendons. And you can put it in the back of the knee, place your foot on the ground if you're seated. And so the the more you draw your foot in, the deeper, the the, uh, the more the the more you're going to feel the knee decompress, but the, also the deeper the pressure, the compression in the upper calf and the lower hamstrings. So right at that attachment point. So see where you are there. And this is more I'm using my arms to draw the leg in. If you want to do it on your back, turn this way. If you're doing it on your back, you don't need to use your arms. You can just let the leg fall if you want. And switch it around, maybe slightly to the left or the right. If you do back with hands, then here I'm not, I'm not pulling my leg and I'm just using the weight of the hands and the arms to increase that compression. And that's what this is about. It's about it, wherever we, we feel the compression, then look on the opposite side. So in this case, in the, way, in the case of the knee joint, we feel the compression in the back of the knee joint and the hamstrings and the calf, and we feel the spaciousness or actually what we call tension, we're stretching, tension is stretching in the front of the kneecap. You can feel it in the front of the, of the quadriceps there too, that tension, that stretching. Nothing forced though, so this is a relaxed, soft way to go, no more need to Engage any muscles. Find a good spot, stay there, or maybe just play with slightly moving the ball one spot or another. This is a really lovely one for the your knee joints. Say thank you to your knees. Can you feel it? Mine's tingling all the way down to the toes. Where do you feel yours? And we'll get ready to release that. Another magic moment, take it out. You can let the leg go long, shake it out. And so we've introduced ourselves to the bottom of the hamstrings in that one. We're working our way up. And now either seated or lying down, you could do just your ball and just let the weight of the leg fall in or maybe do a ball. I really go, I like to go deeper into them. So I use a harder ball and the block on top of it. And just the weight of the femur bone falling in, just starting from there. Usually starting closer to the knee and then working your way up. You can be still. So if you go side to side, you almost feel each individual muscle. You can also go up and down and go the length of the muscles. But there's that choice to move from your hip so that you're trying, you're doing your best even now to keep the quadricep muscles relaxed. So the hip moves the leg and the leg muscles stay relaxed. This all works just fine too. 
And if you've got your eyes closed and you want to do it lying down, letting the heel find the weight. So that's, that's important too. The heel is fully supported on the ground. Mm -hmm. And this is really nice wherever I say your, your muscles can get stuck short, so short and tight or they can get stuck long, long and weak. And it doesn't matter either way, we're working with this connective tissue in a way that we're helping to release and, and relax the muscles so that they can go through their full range of motion. That's what we want. We want them to be long, we want them to be short. Feel free to keep exploring the back line of the hamstrings themselves. Mm-hmm. Anybody making any noises out there? I'm I'm holding back for you for your sake. Finding the spots. <laughs> and let that be your, your ticket inward. It's 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 an invitation. Your body's saying, here I am. You may not have known I was here, but here I am. <laughs> and be a kind, a kind, polite guest. Don't force your way in. Go slow, be mindful, say hello, blow kisses. <laughs> and continuing up, so you get almost to the, you can go all the way up towards the attachment point. And just feeling yourself through that whole right line. Last few breaths, checking in with the pace of your breath. That your breath, your breathing is pleasant. And you know the rest is too. And feel free to remove that. If you're still seated, come on down. And take that rolled mat though this time, if it's available to you, if you still have it. Take the rolled mat, put it underneath the wide, meaty part of your thighs. And before we do a final rest, first of all, that's going to give us a little leg bend. But just a few times, push the backs of the thighs into the mat and push through your heels like we did in the very beginning with both legs. So you're feeling your quadriceps, the front of the thighs engaged, and then release them. Just do that a few times. So encouraging the hamstrings to release and relax by engaging the fronts of the thighs. Do one more push, maybe even holding it for a few breaths, and then let go. And you can keep the mat there. We'll take a, a final rest. Take yourself into your thighs. Think of them as the space in your body that sustains the physical movement forward, that desire to, for propulsion, to, to always want to be going forward in your life. And at one end, we have the knees, lovely hinge joint. And there are what we say are buffers for reality, protecting us along the way. And the thighs can take us towards or away from the realities. And then at the top of the hamstrings, we have the pelvis, the hips. And that's that space in our body of of really animal, more animal instinct. Our nervous system tells us to, to run away from something or hide from something. And feel free to take your last few breaths. Enjoy the backs of your hamstrings. Take your time. Stay there if you'd like. Bodhi's going to come and wish you all a very happy new year. 
and probably steal my balls too. Thank you all for a, a lovely year. We appreciate you being with us. Thanks to my patrons for all the support and all of you who comment and subscribe. Peace, joy, love and light. And keep exploring your body in the year of 2023.